Hey everybody, welcome to My Green Pets. I'm William Green. It's a humid morning here in the Amazon rainforest. You're listening to the sounds of George Vlad. He actually traveled to the Peruvian rainforest where Catlia rex, among many other species, can be found. And he recorded many hours of audio at different times of day, different locations. And uh, when I put the speaker in here and just, you know, close my mouth and just listen, it is, it is truly, it's truly magical. It really does transport me, if just for a moment. But I wanted to show you guys today um, the divisions that I made last week and then give you an update on the Callias as they are growing. So let's start out with those divisions. My uh, Vanda Falcata, so this is the one I'm going to keep. This guy right here. And he had lots and lots and lots of offsets coming off. So I ended up with, I think, six offsets over here. Various sizes, really nice big one there. And then some smaller ones as well. So those are in sphagnum right now. They give their ch roots a chance to get growing again and recover. And those will be up for auction in the spring, May or June. Next to it we have um, Jesse Lee. This is the back bulbs that I'm going to keep of Jesse Lee. And then these are the two divisions that I took. Really, really nice, healthy three bulb divisions. And they are starting to root. So that is very good news. Down there you can see the roots poking out. So I caught them just before they started rooting. So they should get established and have some decent roots by the time they are up for auction in the spring. And then underneath, well, let's go over here. The catacetums all got split up as well and have been repotted. So uh, the furthest along, this is Signotis Wine Delight. And Wine Delight is starting to root. You can see down there, little roots. So again, caught this guy just before he started rooting. And uh, these will be up for auction in the spring as well. And then when you get them, you can pot them in whatever you want to. But the sphagnum, they should be do, they should do okay in sphagnum for now. Got several divisions of all of them. And then if you can kind of go down here, whoops, back out a little bit. These are all my boba film divisions. So uh, we've got Medusa in the back there. Excuse me. And then we've got lovely Elizabeth in the front. And they're just kind of loosely in sphagnum there. Give the chance to give the roots a chance to get some moisture. They've got new growths pushing out. Uh, they don't look like they've suffered too terribly. They, they the bulbs are definitely wrinkled a little bit, but um, I'm really trying to keep them with some moisture there. And hopefully they will keep growing no problem and be nicely rooted and have new growths on them and everything when they're up for auction in the spring. Got a few more over here. My uh, Phalaenopsis, monster Phalaenopsis has got nine buds on it and hopefully it's going to put on a nice show. The bad thing is it's, it's to the point now where I can't actually get it out of the tent unless I disassemble everything and lift it out because it won't fit through the spaces. But that's okay. And then I have, I think, four or five Dienia Ophritis divisions as well. These are so cool. They are, they're called the cattail orchid in um, Taiwan. And they grow up, they're dormant in the winter. They're just now starting to grow. You can see just on the side there, it's got a little green growth. I don't know why it won't focus there. Oh, I know why. There we go. Yeah, you can see that little green growth there with little red speckles coming up. And these get pretty big. Um, they get about, I don't know, probably double the, double the height of that bulb. And then, um, then the bloom spike comes out the top. You can see this is last year's bloom spike. And it looks like a purple cattail and it just continues to bloom all summer for about four months. It's pretty cool. Okay, here are some Callias seedlings. 
These are Dawiana Correa, the yellow form. And then this little guy is a Blasfeldiana, a natural hybrid. See some little roots poking out there. I love these cute little clay pots. And then these are Rex. Here you can see the little roots growing out on those. Doing okay, doing okay. And then if we just kind of look around at the rest of the plants, kind of zoom out a little bit. Almost all the other Calias that you see here are Calia Rex, grown from seed about 10 years ago now. I think they were the seed was sown in February 2011. Most of them are getting to be blooming size. Not all of them, some small ones still. But there is not lots of nice growth coming out. This one, this guy down here, this guy over here is getting really big. I'm actually wondering if it's if that one is actually too early and won't bloom because of how early it is. I'm not sure. It takes them about three months to complete a growth. A new growth there. Just lots of them are showing new growth and breaking new growth. This one actually has got a seed pod, had a couple seed pods on it, but it seems like because of the demand placed on the plant to grow, it's decided not going to go through with this seed pod. So it's kind of interesting to see what happens as the seed pod matures. It starts to turn brown from the tip and then that creeps all the way up the pod. And then you can see that the sides of the pod actually split and that white fluffy stuff inside is the seed. Now even though it is premature, last year it took 340 days for the seed pods to mature. These are more like six months instead of a full year but you can see there oops you can see there is fluffy white stuff inside and I'm going to collect it so that's why I have this little um, infusion bag clipped on top of it and hopefully as it continues to open up that seed will fall out I can catch it in the bag and send it to the lab and if it's viable great they can sew it if it's not no sweat off anybody's back A couple of other plants that are showing signs of growth. This is Dendrochylum tenellum, and you can see lots of new roots pushing out of this guy. New little growth as well. And hopefully in the next month or so we are going to see it bloom. The blooms actually come out of the sides of these grass-like leaves and they just kind of come off the side and their little sprays of white flowers are very very cute. Uh, hopefully it will bloom. Next we have a little, um, it's, it was just a cakey of uh, Nobile Dendrobium. It's really putting out lots of new little roots and uh, new growth. Hopefully that's going to get nice and big. Don't know if it'll bloom this year. Might need another year on there. This Catlia Jose Marti. It's a classic hybrid registered in the 50s. It's Bob Betts by Bobells. Somebody remade it recently. This is a seedling, not a, not a clone, but an actual seed bred seedling. And uh, you can see it's a very aggressive grower. There's roots crawling out everywhere, and it has four growing points. You can see one of the little growing points down there poking out. And uh, I'd really love for this plant to bloom this year. I'm not sure if it needs another year or so, but it's getting close. It's getting big enough to where it should be able to bloom. Behind it, this is a Catlia Triony clone from an awarded plant. It was awarded in 1939, so this guy's mm, the mother plant's quite old. And... Uh, it is also a really aggressive grower. Lots of roots coming out there. It's amazing for a species, you know, but it's definitely a definitely a good one. And then a few weeks ago I was a little concerned about my um half prime child. 
I put some of this fine bark on top of the mix to kind of cover up the base because the roots were kind of pushing out and then drying up. They weren't actually growing out, so hopefully that's going to help. And I've been drenching this thing once a week, maybe twice a week. What I'll do is I'll pour the fertilizer through and then I'll rinse it out really good. I've seen Ed of Ed's Orchids do that. I've seen um, the owner of Path Paradise, he also does that. So they're both very, very successful path growers. I'm gonna try to do what they do. And then my bubble film crocium that I got in the mail a couple weeks ago, it's been potted up in that fine bark as well. And I put uh, catenulatum, bobo catenulatum as a companion plant in there with it. And then we've got Hal Bobophila Mechanolabium just about to open. He's going to open up tomorrow. You can see the sides of the petals already split there, and that'll be that'll be popped open tomorrow. Kind of excited to see on this Kalia Maxima. There was a the sheath here is actually a double sheath. You can see inside there, kind of a darker color. And last year these things bloomed in July. They're not supposed to bloom until November, but it bloomed twice. It bloomed in July and then it bloomed again in September. So really looking forward to that. Really several nice big sheaths on that plant. Be really exciting to see it bloom out. So yeah, I think that's about all I'm gonna show you today. Thanks for tuning in to My Green Pets, and we'll see you next time. Bye.